As almost always, these are 100% cotton t-shirts that have been soaked in soda ash for at least 20 minutes and then spun out in the washing machine until they're just damp. Obviously, I'm starting with two shirts. Um, these are going to be folded inside out and then they're just going to be simple spirals because I tend to do these tests with simple spirals because they're quick and easy, I guess, really. There's no other reason why I use spirals for these kind of comparisons. So I'll go ahead and spiral up both of these real quick and then we'll get on to the dyeing. All right, there we go. We have both of these off to die. All right, we're going with Oxblood Red, Deep Orange, Daffodil, Bright Green, Cerulean Blue, and Deep Purple. And these are all from Dharma. I don't remember which is which, but it doesn't matter. So start with one and then add ice to the other, cover it in dye, and then add ice to the first one. So let's go ahead and go. All right, we'll let that sit and melt through and then see where we go from there. All right, before I put another layer of ice on, I just wanted to show the difference that's visible already. Um, on the side that had the ice 
directly on the fabric and the die on top. You can already see the meandering of the die across the area versus it staying in line on the side where the die was directly on the shirt and the ice on top. So I'm just gonna drop some ice on both of these, let it melt through again, and then we'll do the washout. All right, it's been over 24 hours. We have the ice over dye and the dye over ice. So let's go ahead and rinse both of these out. All right. So here's one. Here's the other. I'll go throw these in the wash and we'll take a final look. Here are the two results. This is the one that has the die under the ice. This is the one that has the die over the ice. There are subtle differences, especially on a spiral. But let's go ahead and look at each one separately. So this is the die under the ice. Um, you'll see there's quite a bit more separation of color, especially if you look in specific, specific areas. Flip this over so you can see the back side. And then this is the die over the ice. See the colors merge more. They blend together quite a bit more in a lot of areas. I'll flip this over. So let's look at a few specific places. We'll take this to start with. Do this. And here we go. Okay. You can see you have pretty much all the colors, and it's difficult in that center part, but that's what we're going to take a look at here. Um, you have more separation of colors on the side that has the dye under the ice than the dye over the ice. Um, the spiral itself looks basically the same. So the pattern itself doesn't change between the designs. The only thing that changes is basically the blending or the merging of the dyes. Uh, we can look at the sleeve over here as another more distinct example and you have more color separation on the side where the ice was sorry where the die was under the ice than where the die was over the ice other patterns especially accordion folds if you go in and, and do any kind of a zigzag or wigwag that type of thing where it's over or under uh, you'll see a much more distinct um, pattern difference. So ends the age-old question of ice dyeing, or at least the question that's popped up the last few years specifically. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions or any comments, um, be sure to put them down below. Until next time, thanks for watching.